The ideas I express in the following pitch may already be in a game or movie, and I may just not know about it. However, if they are in a game or movie that I do know about, I simply don't feel that they live up to the potential of said ideas. So, more video game pitches. This first one, I've sort of seen this done, but it really wasn't satisfactory. I would like a survival horror video game where, over the course of the game, basically the protagonist loses his mind. And, like, at first you wouldn't be able to tell for sure. You, you wouldn't be certain if that was what was going on. You know, basically, I'm thinking something like, it'll, it'll have a map feature like Silent Hill, where stuff gets written on the map as you you know, as you realize things. You know, this door is locked, so you, you know, make a note of that on the map. And, you know, later when you look back on the map, it'll have changed, but, you know, it should be subtle enough that you're thinking, was it always like that, or did it change? It's something like that, to where it really, you know, like how some movies can really make you think, is the protagonist losing his mind? I would like for that to be translated into a game. I think it could be very interesting to be controlling someone where, you know, at the end of the day, you're not sure if what they're doing is, you know, like that thing in Silent Hill 3, you know, they look like monsters to you, you know, are, are you really sure that what you're fighting is something that needs to die? And, you know, that kind of thing. It was sort of done in... It's not really a spoiler, I'd say. Penumbra, the... I don't even remember the title, but the expansion pack. You know, not the first chapter, not the second chapter, but the expansion pack that was utterly useless. It was really clear in that one that that was what was going on. So it really didn't work, if you ask me. You know, it was just like... Again, not a spoiler, because you look at the other two, you know, where you are, just your your basic surroundings, you can tell that, you know, this looks, this looks real enough, you know, this is somewhere I could imagine being. You wake up and, you know, the very first thing in the expansion pack, you're like, where the heck am I? This is so, this is not, you know, is, am I even still the same person, you know, am, am I playing as the same protagonist? Anyway. The next two are going to be quite heavily affected by the two games I've been playing every, basically, all the free time I've been able to muster recently. The first one is from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and yes, there is a review coming up as soon as I've actually completed it. I would like for basically a Hitman game, and it's not really a secret that the Assassin's Creed games are very, you know, they, they borrow from Hitman. I would like a Hitman game where basically you have the, you know, the, the open world kind of thing of it that they took from the Grand Theft Auto franchise, and yeah, basically you know, make it like that. Only, other than, you know, my main problem, and anyone who knows me and knows my opinion of the Assassin's Creed games knows this, my main problem with the franchise, as, as, as far as I've played it so far, maybe it has changed. You know, I haven't gotten to Revelations yet. Anyway, my main problem way too little challenge. You know, they're sort of getting there with Brotherhood, but it's really still... I I, I don't understand why it's a game. It, it just seems like it's essentially you're just you're just moving around. It's, it's a fish tank. It's not really... way too much of these games. It's just not at all challenging, and I don't understand why people you know, and you'll be asking me, why do I play? Well, because I love the Prince of Persia climbing. You know, you could put that in any game, and I probably played at least a little bit. And I'm a little bit getting into the story and the characters. There is stuff I like about the games. Anyway, basically, in Brotherhood, there are these missions where you have to destroy Leonardo's war machines, and 
in these missions you have this small secluded area if you get spotted and recognized done you have to start it over and you have you know a mission in it I would like for a Hitman game to be entirely composed of that. You know, small areas where you basically can move around and there are people around you, but you, yeah, you know, if you get spotted and detected, it really is, you know, kind of like it was some of the time in the first game. In the first game, it wasn't that difficult to completely screw up your mission, you know, and I just like that pressure back. It just... I miss it. And the other, the, the final idea for this video. Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days. I've been playing... It's still only arcade mode, because I've, you know, I've completed it both on... You know, I've, I've even completed it on the hardest difficulty setting. The single player doesn't really hold anything left, and I... Yeah, so, ba and, and the multiplayer, for some reason, I can't seem to find matches. I don't know if no one's playing it, not that big a deal to me, I can play arcade mode. Anyway, the thing I've been thinking, I love the arcade mode, I, I freaking love it. It is one of my most enjoyable video gaming experiences as of late. It, it just, it, it's, it's made me have faith in the medium again. It's, it, finally we have something really challenging and really fun. And just really, it just, I know that it's not a popular game and I'm fine with that. Just, that is my opinion of it. Anyway, the one thing that I think could be done to the arcade mode, and by extension, the multiplayer mode. Because arcade mode is offline multiplayer with, you know, AI instead of other players. And I suppose maybe also the single player is that every time you kill someone, I would like for someone else to respawn, to, you know, to, to spawn, so that basically, and and I think I don't think it should be that they appear in the same place because then you just have an unbeatable game and that's not fun. I think they should be on the other side of you, so to speak. Say that you're, you know. There, there are enemies in between you and your objective. You're moving towards your objective and you're gunning down the people who are guarding your objective, who are in your way, sir. Just made Spoonie's head explode. And as soon as, you know, every single one of those that die would respawn on the other side of you. So they would be like trying to hunt you down. And not, I don't mean like really close by, obviously. Again, unbeatable game, but just so that you didn't relax at any point. Because that's one of the things I love about the game. You hardly ever relax. But what I've been noticing is that once I'm at the getaway car, I'm kind of relaxed, you know? I've killed everybody else, including my own men, so that I can steal their money. I'm just kind of, I don't know, I guess in multiplayer, maybe you can't relax as much, I don't know. Because anybody could betray anybody, and the AI don't betray anybody. Still, I do think it would really be cool if, you know, suddenly there'd be, you know, a couple of people showing up from behind. You know, and maybe they'd be, you know, they, they should, of course, be tactical about it. They shouldn't just come running at you. But anyway, and by the same token, when you shoot someone from behind you, you, you know, someone else shows up in front of your objective. So again, it really, you know, I guess at the end of the day, you and again, not really close by. Maybe they'd be behind your objective and have to make their way past your objective. But just so that when you're at the escape chopper, if you've just shot, if, if you five minutes, if, you know, one minute ago, rounds aren't that long, if one minute ago you shot someone behind you, then by now someone is approaching from, you know, around your getaway car. And, you're, and that's also because, I, you know, I realized that it's possible for getaway vehicles, I shouldn't keep saying car because sometimes it's a chopper, they can be blown up if, you know, if they're shot at enough, but that hardly ever happens, and that's really too bad, because again, it's such a great opportunity for great tension. You know, even when you're on the chopper, even when the clock ticking, there's still something else to worry about. That is just, 
and again, you know, that's how it is in real life. You, you know, you might have shot a bunch of them, but there might still be a few more. You know, I, I would maybe also like for there to be kind of a feature where you have to steer the getaway vehicle and actually get away. But obviously, you know, if you have eight players and no one betrays anyone else and everyone makes it to the getaway, who's gonna be the one to get to drive? You know, obviously that's not gonna work, you know. So, yeah. But I think that was everything I wanted to say about it, so yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.